Today we are going to discuss the remaining topics from hematology and then I will start our next chapter. So the first topic for today is multiple myeloma. What is multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma is basically a cancer of plasma cells. Plasma cells are found by B lymphocytes and then these plasma cells result in the formation of antibodies. So what will happen in multiple myeloma? Due to excessive growth, proliferation of plasma cells, excessive or non-functioning antibodies will be produced. there will be overproduction of non-functioning antibodies or immunoglobulins. So this is one thing that will happen in multiple myeloma. And the second thing that will happen in multiple myeloma is that this plasma cell, they will uh, overgrow in the bone marrow and uh, replace the normal bone marrow tissues. And the second thing these plasma cells will do, they will stimulate the osteoclastic cells, the bone dissolving cells. And they will inhibit the osteoblastic cells. So remember these three things that happen in multiple myeloma due to excessive proliferation of plasma cells. Number one is that uh, due to excessive prolifer proliferation of plasma cell, <clears throat> There will be overproduction of non-functioning immunoglobulins or antibodies. These plasma cells will stimulate osteoclast growth, which will result in bone resorption and bone pain and hypercalcemia. But at the same time, they inhibit the bone forming cells, which are osteoblasts. So, bone forming cells are inhibited and bone dissolving cells are stimulated. So the person will have hypercalcemia with the normal alkaline phosphatase. Remember that alkaline phosphatase indicate the activity of bone forming cells such as osteoblasts. But in multiple myeloma, the bone forming cells are inhibited. So ALP will be normal it will not be increased as occur in other uh, diseases such as uh, bony metastasis in different cancers, uh, which has hypercalcemia with high alkaline phosphatase. In multiple myeloma, remember that alkaline phosphatase will be normal and there will be hypercalcemia. So if you remember these things, then uh, it will be easy to, for you to remember the presenting symptoms of multiple myeloma. That is bone pain. Bone pain is particularly in the back and in the ribs. There will be hypercalcemia. Signs of hypercalcemia will be present. Sorry, can you please say about the plasma cells? They will stimulate osteoclast cells. And uh, what will be inhibited is osteoblast will be inhibited. Yes, bone forming cells are inhibited, osteoblast cells, or the activity of uh, bone forming cells is inhibited. And alkaline phosphatase indicate the activity of bone forming cells or osteoblasts. So that's why ALP level will be normal in multiple myeloma, though there will be hypercal uh, hypercalcemia due to bone resorption due to increase activity of osteoclastic cells. So due to uh, this uh, stimulation of osteoclast and inhibition of osteoblast, there will be bone pain and hypercalcemia with normal ALP. Now, the second thing that uh, we discussed that happened in multiple myeloma is <clears throat> overproduction of non-functioning immunoglobulins. Now, uh, due to this overproduction of non-functioning immunoglobulins, two, th two things will happen. One is that uh, 
because these immunoglobulins, they are non-functioning. So the person will have a history of recurrent infection because of low immunity. And the second thing is that these uh, uh, immunoglobulins, they will be excreted in the kidney and which will result in a damage to the kidney tubules. So the person may develop a renal failure as well. So someone uh, with anemia, hypercalcemia and renal failure, you will suspect multiple myeloma. For example, let's discuss this example. A 92 year old complains of severe back pain. She claims that she had a fight and someone has broken her back and insists that her mother is coming to visit her at the hospital. So a 92 year old female complains of back pain. So back pain with anemia, you will always suspect multiple myeloma. If the patient age is above 50 years. So any patient with age above 50 years and who present to you with severe back pain and anemia, you will suspect multiple myeloma. So her lab investigations, they show HB of uh, 109, that is low, so anemia is present. Urea and creatinine are high and calcium is also high. So someone with back pain, anemia, renal failure and hypercalcemia, your diagnosis, you should suspect multiple myeloma. How uh, will we confirm our diagnosis? The diagnostic investigation or the most appropriate investigation to confirm the diagnosis of multiple myeloma is bone marrow biopsy. Bone marrow biopsy will show abundant plasma cells. Other investigation that can be done uh, that can help us in uh, diagnosing the multiple myeloma is serum protein electrophoresis. Serum protein electrophoresis will show M spike. That is increased monoclonal immunoglobulin spike or M spike will be present on serum protein electrophoresis. And these proteins or immunoglobulins, they are excreted in the urine as well. So urine protein electrophoresis will show these proteins, which are called as benz jones proteins. A peripheral blood film will show a Rolex formation. So because of uh, excessive formation of immunoglobulins, these red blood cells, they stack on one another, on each other. They become sticky uh, due to uh, this poor production of immunoglobulins. So you can see in this diagram that this is a Rolex formation. This is a peripheral blood film which is showing Rolex formation. So initially on a peripheral blood film, there will be Rolex formation here, here and here as well. So initially uh, blood film will show Rolex formation. So someone uh, with a back pain and Rolex formation on a peripheral blood film, again, you will suspect multiple myeloma. And because there's increased activity of uh, osteoclast, so bone lysis will be increased and there will be lytic lesion on X-ray of the skeleton. There will be hypercalcemia as well, but with normal alkaline phosphatase. This point is important to remember. Hypercalcemia with normal alkaline phosphatase is multiple myeloma. Anemia will be normocytic, normochromic. Renal functions could be impaired. And ESR will be high. So in short, a short summary of multiple myeloma, when to suspect multiple myeloma, 
remember that multiple in multiple myeloma there is excessive proliferation of plasma cells this excessive proliferation of plasma cells result in overproduction of immunoglobulins which are abnormal or non functioning and when these immunoglobulins they are excreted in the kidney they result in kidney damage and may cause a renal failure also this excessive proliferation of plasma cells in the bone marrow will suppress the other cell lines so the person may have anemia and the third thing that these plasma cells do they stimulate osteoclastic cells so there will be hypercalcemia as well and due to osteoclast or bone lysis in the uh, vertebral column the person will complain to you with um, back pain the initial investigation is a full blood count with a peripheral blood film full blood count will show normocytic normocrinic anemia and peripheral blood film will show rolex formation because rbc is sick to each other due to uh, these immunoglobulins and x ray of the skeleton will show lytic lesions and serum electrolytes will show an increase in the calcium and normal alkaline phosphatase the definitive or most appropriate investigation is bone marrow biopsy which will show abundant plasma cells there are some other investigation as well uh, serum protein electrophoresis will in show an in increase in monoclonal immunoglobulin spike or m spike and urine protein electrophoresis will show benz jones proteins now some points about the management of multiple myeloma remember that do serum protein electrophoresis and esr in all the patients who are above 50 and present to you with back pain so osteolytic bone lesion they can cause back pain they can cause lytic lesions and they even can cause vertebral collapse so the one problem that we face is uh, osteolytic bone lesions the second problem is anemia third one is recurrent infections and renal impairment as well here is a mnemonic to remember all these things that is crepe C for hypercalcemia, R for renal failure, A for anemia, and B for bone pain. Uh, the treatment uh, of multiple myeloma is uh, supportive plus chemotherapy. For bone pain, uh, we can give analgesia. but remember that because multiple myeloma is associated with renal impairment so we will avoid nsaids instead we will give opioids such as tramadol for pain management and because uh, there is bone resorption so we need to give bisphosphonates as well because bisphosphonates can reduce fracture rates <clears throat> and if uh, the bone pain does not respond to these then radiotherapy can also be done in a localized disease for anemia blood transfusion will be done and erythropoietin may also be used so supportive treatment along with uh, chemotherapy such as bortezomib this for need to prevent fractures and symptomatic treatment for hypercalcemia so this was all about multiple myeloma is it clear everyone is there
examples. Then Sorry, can I ask one question? Yes. Uh, it's just that if this radiotherapy is uh, uh, given only when the other treatments like chemotherapy and analgesia, they are failed, or is it like a, a, a focal treatment, like if there is a pain at a particular spot, like vertebral pain or back pain? Yes, that's a good question. Radiotherapy is given uh, when uh, the disease is localized. Because right. if there is uh, extensive disease, then uh, radiotherapy will do more harm than good. Right. So yes, radiotherapy will be used for localized disease. Thank you. So a 60 year old female presents with history of back and rib pains. So again, someone uh, who is above 50 and present to you with back and rib pain, you will suspect multiple myeloma. She is thirsty and tired, her HV. So thirsty means hypercalcemia, and tired means anemia. So three signs of multiple myeloma are present. That is hypercalcemia, anemia, and bone pain. Now let's see her investigation. HV is 90, so it's confirmed the anemia. Hypercalcemia is also confirmed on the investigation, that is four. ALP is normal. Again, hypercalcemia with normal ALP, you will suspect multiple myeloma. ESR is also raised and GFR is also low. So we have got the fourth criteria for multiple myeloma as well. That was part of our mnemonic rap. Renal failure is also there. So the diagnosis is multiple myeloma. The cell type that will be found on bone marrow biopsy are plasma cells. The most appropriate investigation is bone marrow biopsy. The findings on the peripheral blood film is Rolex formation. Finding on the complete blood picture is normocytic normocrinic anemia. Another example, a 57-year-old man presents with lethargy and he looks pale. Blood pressure is 150 over 100. So lethargy and pale anemia is present in a 57-year-old man. His urine analysis show blood and protein positive. Creatine elevated calcium is high. So a 57-year-old with anemia and Immaturia and proteinuria on urine analysis. Creatine is also elevated and calcium is high. Again, four criteria that was our part of our mnemonic crab. They are fulfilled. What is the most appropriate investigation among the following options? So, The most appropriate investigation usually in general is bone marrow biopsy, but in the following investigations, bone marrow biopsy is not given, so we'll go for urine for Ben Jones proteins. So if someone present to you with features of hypercalcemia and ALP is high, then you will suspect only meds such as from lung cancer, from breast cancer, or from prostate cancer as well. Squamous cell carcinoma of the lung can also cause hypercalcemia and high ALP. Multiple myeloma can also cause hypercalcemia, but ALP will be normal. And primary hyperparathyroidism can also cause hypercalcemia, but in primary hyperparathyroidism, Parathyroid hormone levels will be high and phosphate will be low because parathyroid hormone hates phosphate. So this was all about multiple myeloma, its management and diagnosis. Now, uh, we are going to discuss some myeloproliferative disorders. Myeloproliferative disorders are basically 
due to proliferation of hematopoietic myelite stem cells. So if these hematopoietic myelite stem cells, they proliferate to form RBCs, then uh, this is known as polycythemia rubra vera. WBC is chronic myeloid leukemia. And if uh, there's excessive formation of platelets, then it is known as essential thrombocytemia. And if there's excessive proliferation of fibroblast cells, then it is known as myelofibrosis. So the first myeloproliferative, we have already discussed chronic myeloid leukemia. So can somebody tell me what are the diagnostic points for chronic myeloid leukemia? Chronic myeloid leukemia is basically a myeloproliferative disorder. Who will tell me in the clinchers about chronic myeloid leukemia? There will be splenomegaly, Philadelphia chromosome positive. Uh, then there will be more than 100. And we'll get all stages of maturation in the peripheral blood film. That's right, excellent. So massive splenomegaly, high WBC count, uh, usually more than 100 but it can be less than 100, but the WBC count will be high. So high WBC count with uh, massive splenomegaly, your diagnosis will be chronic myeloid leukemia. High WBC count with uh, granulocytes at all stages of maturation on a peripheral blood film, again, your diagnosis will be CML. So the second myeloproliferative disorder that we are going to discuss is polycythemia rubra vera. Polycythemia rubra vera is basically excessive formation of RBCs. What are the uh, presenting features of polycythemia rubra vera? Polycythemia rubra vera is basically caused by a JAK mutation in the genes that is JAK2 that uh, control the growth of RBCs or different type of cells, such as WBCs and platelets as well. So when there is a mutation in the JAK2 gene, what happens, there's excessive proliferation of RBCs, WBCs, and platelets. All of them excessively proliferate. But RBCs uh, usually proliferate more than these WBCs and platelets. So due to excessive proliferation of RBCs, the hematocrit will be high. Normally, uh, the normal hematocrit is uh, 45 to 55%. And in polycythemia rubra vera, it will exceed 55%. And due to excessive proliferation of these uh, cell lines, RBCs, WBCs, and platelets, uh, that is due to a mutation in the JAK2 gene result in hyperviscosity of the blood. So what will happen when there is hyperviscosity of the blood? Hyperviscosity uh, of the blood means uh, chances of thrombosis increases. So thrombosis in uh, veins will result in a deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. And thrombosis in arteries will result in MI and stroke. So the patient is at risk. The risk of MI and pulmonary embolism and DVT and stroke, they the risk of all of them is increased due to hyperviscosity of the blood. And due to this hyperviscosity, what will happen? The person will complain of burning sensation in fingers and toes, and there will be hepatosplenomegaly as well, and headache as well due to hyperviscosity of the blood. So these are some manifestation of polycythemia rubra vera. That is, uh, there is one specific symptoms, pruritus uh, that is, or itching, especially after hot shower. So can somebody tell me other conditions, three other condition in which there is itching after hot shower? Uh, one is chronic TB disease, 
Another is catalyst and liver failure. Yes, that's right. So itching after a hot shower and the person complains to you with burning sensation of fingers and toes and facial plethora or redness, facial redness, then your diagnosis will be polycythemia rubravera. Itching after a hot shower and the person is pale and edematic, then your diagnosis will be CKD. Itching, heart, itching after hot shower and there is a linear borrows on the skin, then the diagnosis will be scabies. So the initial investigation in case of uh, polycythemia rubravera is uh, uh, serum erythropoietin level. Remember that erythropoietin because of excessive proliferation of RBCs and feedback inhibition of erythropoietin uh, the erythropoietin level will be low or it will be normal in polycythemia rubra vera. And can the I diagnosis repeat? is. Doctor, can you repeat? What? Can you repeat? I missed it. So, in polycythemia rubra vera, due to excessive proliferation of RBCs or due to excessive formation of RBCs, uh, there is a feedback inhibition of erythropoietin secretion. So erythropoietin level will be low or it will be normal in polycythemia rubra vera. While in secondary polycythemia, secondary polycythemia is due to oxygen deficiency, such as occur at high altitudes or in patient with COPD or <clears throat> In patient with congenital heart diseases, any, any any cause of chronic hypoxia can lead to secondary polycythemia. And the difference between secondary and primary polycythemia is that in primary polycythemia, because RBCs are excessively formed due to a mutation in JAK2 gene, so it will lead to a feedback inhibition of sedum erythropoietin. So erythropoietin level will be low. While in secondary, Polycythemia, what happens due to low oxygen? Low oxygen stimulate. Low oxygen is basically a stimulus for erythropoietin secretion. So low oxygen will stimulate erythropoietin secretion. So in secondary polycythemia, erythropoietin will be high. So the initial investigation uh, in, if someone present to you with polycythemia will be erythropoietin level. And on the basis of erythropoietin level, uh, we can differentiate between primary and secondary polycythemia. <clears throat> and the definitive or most appropriate investigation or the investigation of choice is uh, a screen for JAK2 mutation. So initial investigation is erythropoietin level and the definitive or investigation of choice is erythro oh, sorry, JAK2 screen. Now, what is the treatment of polycythemia rubra vera? Treatment is phlebotomy or venesection. Basically, it's uh, bleeding the patient to reduce the elevated hematocratic level to reduce the blood viscosity. It is the mainstay of treatment. Low dose aspirin is also given because there's fear of thrombosis and it is a malignancy. So the definitive management is chemotherapy, either interferon if the patient ages less than 40 years or hydroxyurea if the patient is 40 years or above. So phlebotomy, venesection, aspirin and chemotherapy is the treatment for polycythemia rubra vera. Now some points about secondary polycythemia or secondary erythrocytosis. Remember that RBC formation can increase uh, secondary to hypoxia. So any conditions that uh, can cause chronic hypoxia will result in secondary polycythemia. One difference we have already discussed between polycythemia rubra vera and secondary polycythemia is that in polycythemia rubra vera, 
erythropoietin levels are either low or normal and in secondary polycythemia rubra they are high the second difference between these two is in primary uh, primary polycythemia rubra all three cell lines are increased while in secondary only rbcs are increased because hypoxia is a stimulus for increased production of rbcs only so only hemoglobin will be elevated in secondary polycythemia the causes of secondary polycythemia they include chronic hypoxia due to copd cyanotic and genital heart diseases and high altitudes all of them can lead to uh, excessive production of erythropoietin from kidneys because low oxygen stimulate the production of erythropoietin which then stimulates the bone marrow to produce more rbc and which result in secondary polycythemia so initial investigation then include complete blood count hb of more than 18.5 in males and more than 16.5 in females you will suspect polycythemia rubra vera erythropoietin level will be low and ferritin level will also be low ferritin is low because of excessive consumption of iron stores for the formation of rbcs so erythropoietin and ferritin level will be low there will be thrombocytosis and leukocytosis as well because all the three cell lines are increased so let's do an example a 55 year old male presents with shortness of breath and chronic cough he is a chronic smoker and drinks alcohol socially he also complains of tiredness and lethargy his hb is 195 so hb is more than 18.6 and because the patient is male so this is polycythemia hematocrit is also more than 55% so the criteria to for polycythemia is confirmed but wbc count and platelets they are within the normal range so is it a pol primary polycythemia or a secondary polycythemia only hb and hematocrit is raised so because of the it looks like secondary because of the his uh, shortness of breath and chronic cough maybe a copd case with smoker yes he is a chronic smoker so yes it looks like a secondary polycythemia so what investigation will you do uh, to confirm your diagnosis uh, erythropoietin level uh, so what will happen to erythropoietin level in this case it will be raised increased yes raised so the useful hormone level to request is erythropoietin erythropoietin would be high in this case because it looks like a secondary polycythemia and <clears throat> except hb all other cell line will be normal so this was all about polycythemia rubra vera and secondary polycythemia everyone kindly disconnect and reconnect again